Okay, so military security firm Ghost Robotics has built a mechanical dog capable of carrying a remote control rifle on its back. The 6.5 millimeter rifle has a range of 120 meters. And this is the first type of robotic weapons dog that the US military has used before. Um, that's October the 14th, 2021. What do you think of this, Andrew? Good for society? I mean, it, it's good if it's used for its intended purposes, but I don't think it's really, when they have other um, remote ways of fighting wars, um, I don't think they necessarily need this, but it could, it could help in, in missions where you need access to smaller areas where you can't actually get people into, let's say. And it could help in, I mean, America doesn't have this problem, but these kind of robots can help where they struggle to recruit um, soldiers such as in Britain. But I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, I think it's pretty scary. The reason why I think it's scary is because something like that is going to be far, far harder to kill than a human being. It's going to be more agile. It's going to be harder to kill. It's going to be far. It's better. It's basically a much better killing machine than even the most elite soldier. You'd think in like 10 years time. Therefore, if one of them goes rogue, I know it's a bit fatalistic kind of approach, but if one of them does go rogue or even if like, imagine if a hundred of those, the uh, the programming got fucked and they just started attacking civilians and they and they broke out of the factory think how fucked they could kill thousands and thousands of people you know what i mean yeah or a if a terrorist got hold of them they could rewire it and use it for their own purposes mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah i don't think they're a good idea no i mean they're still going to end up killing civilians have you seen the, the amount of civilians that get killed by drone strikes? No. How it's much? Fucking preposterous. Uh, I don't actually know. Um, right, percentage. Let me just try to Google it. Uh, no. There was that, those um, end of last year, there was that drone strike that killed 10 Afghan civilians, though. Do you remember that the US did? Yeah. Like the problem with it is, is that the way they do these drone strikes is that it, they just do it off a phone signal, you know? So, mm. so if, if, if someone made a call on this phone, they could locate it to that house and then they just blow the whole house up. Yeah. The phone could have been given to their sister or anything. You know what I mean? There's, there's no uh, check as to who's in the house and stuff. It's, Seriously fucking dark stuff, these uh, these drone strikes sometimes. Yeah, I remember Black Mirror did an episode on this where it just, it, was, it wasn't, there wasn't, there was barely any dialogue in it. It was just this dog, this robot dog chasing this woman. But oh, I can't remember if she I've seen managed it. to kill it in the end. It's all black I and white. I think she did. Yeah, the entire episode's black and white. I think yeah. it's, it's showing Wales because it's like a, it's a, a warehouse. It escapes, and there's like quarries and things like that. Yeah, and it's just chasing them. Yeah, well, well, this is the same as the Ghost Robotics, the one the U.S. military are using. They're both based as that and the Black Mirror one are both based on the Boston Dynamics robot dog, and now mm. they have guns on them. It is basically the dog for Black Mirror, isn't it? Yeah. I think robots kind of terrify me. There's a robot revolution, not revolution, but there's a wave of robots that's going to hit society and the labor market and stuff in the next 10, 20 years. Yet nobody's talking about it. Did you read that CNBC article I sent you about how many jobs they could take? Yeah, 20 million by 2030, which isn't really far away. It's eight years time in the United States. It's in the United States, right? But the thing is, though, um, 
think how many think how much social unrest was in part uh, attributed to the mass unemployment that the covid lockdowns brought on yet yeah, this will be far far bigger unemployment yeah and well yeah it's like the in the industrial revolution when people a lot of people didn't want those machines but though i'd argue that that industrial revolution was necessary but this one's this one won't i don't think this will help people that much unless they retrain if they trained people that were losing their jobs to be able to do jobs that robots can't do then it would be fine but if they're just doing it to um get cheap labor then it's not a good idea yeah so they will probably argue that it increases efficiency oh yeah for sure it will increase efficiency but yeah that's the problem they're talking about if there are this many robots in the labor force and stuff a universal basic income will surely at some point be necessary i think it's american truckers uh like with autonomous drivers they're set to lose a shit ton of jobs mm. Autonomous drivers in China, they think loads and loads and loads are going to be losing their jobs as well to robots. Yeah, because they have it's the world's factory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The future of autonomous trucking, the freight business in America is at 800. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, can't really find anything. I probably should have prepared this before. But um, yeah, anyway, robots scare me. I don't think they talked about it enough because if you look at the way- I think maybe they're viewed as like a fantasy thing, but they're not really. No, they're kind of here. If you look at the rapid growth of technology and how, think of basically every section in society and jobs and stuff, it's all becoming more dependent on technology, right? Yeah. And I don't know, I just think if, ro if there's, when it gets to a point when the artificial intelligence is integrated with these robots and artificial intelligence becomes smarter than humans, which is inevitable, it's just a question of when, I just think we're screwed. Well, a lot of people um, are worried that, um, that this will eventually be merged with people and that um, I think Elon Musk wanted to is saying he wants to create an implant, basically. And I'm not sure when. Neuro but, Neuralink. Yeah. But the, no, go on. I mean, this if you like, the more you fuse robots and people together, I think the more dangerous it becomes. Yeah, I agree. With the Neuralink, they're originally trying to uh cure it, it's to aid like disabled people that are paralyzed and stuff but and then he said in the future he wants to get get it to a level that's just put in normal humans but it will give you just an enormous cognitive ability like advantage it was on uh joe rogan podcast talking about it but then he was like well surely the sort of wealth gap and stuff if these things are like a million dollars each for these implants but they just make you 10 times more productive Think how yeah. more unequal the world's going to become. Not that it's exactly equal at the moment, but you know, yeah. what I mean? people just become terminators, be going around doing all kinds of things, but it won't actually be benefiting a lot of people. No, nah, I worry that all of the sort of short term gains we get from robots and the increased efficiency and in artificial intelligence and increases everything from healthcare to, you know, the financial industry and stuff, long term is going to come back to bite us really badly. Well, yeah, it might like implode or something eventually. Yeah, I think it will. It's, it's quite a um, fatalist perspective, but I am genuinely worried about robots. Not going to lie, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I think, I don't know, I just think, most people don't talk about it. Like eight years time, 2030, that many jobs lost in America, that's not very long at all. I think once they become more visible in society, people will 
start paying more attention to them but you don't really apart from you do have loads of robots now like every everyone has one in the sense well most people have a a, a smartphone which is a, a robot and computers and everything but um i think because they don't see them because they're not the kind of robots you see like the stereotypical ones people wouldn't yeah. think of them as robots but you already have loads loads around us no that's true that's true the thing that scared me was when elon musk i was watching this interview of him and he was saying tesla is the world's largest robotics company and you see they released like the prototype tesla robot where he was saying in the future, the, this robot is going to be far more important to Tesla than any cars. Mm. And I was like, if a $1 trillion company is saying something like that, you should probably take notice. And if one yeah, of I remember this. Men is Ro saying. Yeah, I remember this robot. The thing is, though, I don't think we're going to see that robot for years. He kind of, because he's real smart. With some of his releases, he kind of plays the press and the public a bit. Think of when he de debuted the Tesla Cybertruck. When was that? Mm. Wait, let me see. Two 2019. Is that right? 2019? And then think of the Tesla Roadster, this like this super fast car. He, he teases these new products and then he won't actually put them into production for like two, three years. Yeah, I guess he wants to create um hype. Yeah. He is a hype man. He's crazy. Crazy, crazy man. I worry that I worry that a lot of the things he does isn't actually won't benefit a lot of people. Yeah, like I don't know. The um the going to Mars and all the space exploration. It's like the two richest people on the planet are both hell bent on leaving the planet. Like, what do they know that we don't? And, know? and, you know I mean? and a lot of the destruction of the planet is down to these kind of people. The big companies because of the oh. kind of companies they run, but then they're the ones trying to leave. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. That's true. I'm trying to find out Facebook pollution. I think I read somewhere that Facebook emits the same amount of pollution as like New Zealand or something, which is something ridiculous. Some of these big companies just use insane amounts of pollution. But yeah, no, I, I do find it weird why they're like, why do you want to go to Mars? Obviously, it'd be interesting to be multi-planetary, but we haven't discovered our own planet yet, really. Yeah, a lot of the our planet is discovered, like the oceans. And also, but people like, Mark Zuckerberg, he's trying to leave reality. Oh by, yeah, yeah. The meta by doing the metaverse. So he's actually at least at least the other billionaires acknowledge that this planet is terrible, but Mark Zuckerberg is trying to ignore that by creating a fake reality, which is worse, I think. I don't like where the metaverse and the virtual reality stuff's going like don't go to twisted i am a fan of doing virtual reality i think it has uses it has good really good uses but like all things it can be misused yeah i just think the way the world's going it's going to be we're just going to evolve in like a hundred years time we'll just be these fat slugs we'll look like seals with arms and legs We'll just be yeah. all connected to the virtual world. Yeah, we'll, we'll be like, health, and we'll just be getting, you know, force fed all these virtual adverts. And I don't know. But the problem is, it is fun to do gaming and to be connected to technology, but it's fun while you're doing it. But once you stop doing it, you don't feel good. Whereas if you go, like last week, I went up some mountains in Wales, it's just the fresh air, the exercise, you feel so good for even the next day as well but i don't think you're going to get that from the metaverse no because it's it's all in your head but yeah i don't think it's i think it's a good idea 
to use it for some things, but it's not a good idea to make a replacement for reality. No, and the world will just get the the real world will get worse because people will be too involved with the metaverse and won't be they won't be bothered about all the degradation going on in the actual world. Yeah, but are normal people anyway? Like people don't care. They just love watching Love Island and Well, yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> I think yeah, I think the biggest risk of it is I don't know what the biggest risk of it. It just scares me a bit. I I definitely think it's the future, though. If one of the world's biggest companies, you know, is basically betting all its chips on the metaverse. And and they're starting it so, like, it's already started now. And it's quite, it'll probably be quite advanced very soon. Oh, yeah. Technology advances so quick. Think of like the original PlayStations or games consoles compared to the PS5. I feel like by 2050 or maybe even before then, it will be quite a co- like people will be going into the metaverse quite a lot. By 2050, 30 years' time, 28 years' time, I think people will be briefly dipping out of the metaverse in reality. You know, when they need to, you know, reattach their food IV drip or whatever. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I think maybe there'll be like a kind of, there will be a lot of resistance, but mo- I think most people will probably go along with it and it'll just create lots of different tiers in society. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be the new Netflix. Hmm. I deleted my Netflix account. I don't like Netflix. I think it's killing culture among young people in Britain. I mean, I get, yeah, I guess to an extent, because it's um, it kills other forms of like film. It makes people spend so much time watching it. It's like people's hobby. Just go home, watch Netflix, get drunk at the weekend, you know? Yeah, Netflix does. I have watched a few things on there, but I don't actually use it very much. Yeah, I think that's good. I used to use it far, far too much. Do you want to talk about politics? Okay. Have you been up to date recently or not? Not as much as I should be. Yeah. Some I kind of follow I do follow it but I kind of dip in and out of it because a lot of it is just the same and a lot of it isn't very a lot of it can be a bit like nonsensical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. PM visits UK troops in Poland basically Boris has been saved with all of these parties and stuff coming out, he's been saved by the Ukraine-Russia uh, tensions, hasn't he? Yeah. And even... and Yeah, I mean, it has helped. So, like, normally if you perform well in, like, these international crises, it helps your ratings. Oh, yeah, for sure. They That's what they say, isn't it? In times of war, nationalism soars. Mm. Get behind your leader. Put your difference. But a lot of these, a lot of these um, foreign leaders find Boris quite laughable. Yeah, I as know. an actual leader, or don't really take Boris seriously. I mean, I don't think Putin takes Boris seriously. Oh no, I don't think Putin takes many seriously. Oh well, the... yeah, not but, and yeah, yeah, not even Biden. No. especially Biden. Yeah, the the other day, Macron had like an emergency trip to Russia and had a meeting and chatted with Putin. The next day it came out in like the West, like in the French media and in the UK media. Oh, Putin says, uh, you know, he's prepared to, I think, de-escalate or not, not further escalate uh, tensions in Ukraine. But and then the same day, the Kremlin put out a statement denying this claim. I'm like, you had the meeting, which is true. 
Mm, yeah, no one really knows what goes on in these meetings, to be honest. Yeah, like how many people, members of the public, are reading the transcripts or the minutes of these meetings? Nobody. Well, yeah, nobody. It's it's impossible to know what goes on. No, it's... it's and this conflict has been going on for years, really. So it's not really a recent thing. No, I mean, I hope... It's the whole Crimea thing. Yeah, that was wild. They literally invaded and took Crimea. Yeah. But... Yeah, the thing I think, though, is the way our news covers it, like Russia or this great evil force and stuff. I was like, remember we invaded Afghanistan and Iraq and in Iraq a million people died, you know? Mm. We, we invade countries. Well, every country has their own interest to protect. And yeah, for sure, for sure. But and they... your, 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 your opinion of who's evil depends on which country you're from, usually, or oh, where you yeah. live. Of course. It's just, you know, yeah, we get played against each other. Like the Indians get taught to hate Pakistan. You know, we get taught to hate Russia and China. They get taught to hate us. But the, the, the alternative perspective is that Putin's argument is they don't want the NATO expansion. Oh, and yeah. It has expanded a lot. So for them, it's easy for them to argue, you know, look, NATO's coming to take over, you know, they're taking over all these countries. So it's, mm. I understand, you know, the point they're coming from, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, did I show you about BlackRock and Stangrad? No. Right, let me pause it for like 10 seconds when I find this article. Hang on. Right, so the thing I sent you was how these two, well, I don't even know what they are, uh, investment companies, BlackRock and Vanguard, are set to be worth 20 trillion by 2025. Three years time, BlackRock is set to be worth 10 trillion. And 2020. And Vanguard is set to be worth 16 trillion, which in context would make them both, they'd put them both in the top four world's largest economies. Like it would be the US, the US economy. Well, how big is the US economy? 13 trillion? Let me just Google it. Okay, I was miles off. The US economy is 24 trillion. Mm. Chinese economy is 15 trillion jesus so by 2025 vanguard would be bigger than the chinese economy mm. yeah that's a lot Ooh. like that's that's crazy and i'd heard of blackrock before but i'd never yeah. i'd never even heard of vanguard but basically these companies they own and they own shares and other things but they also manage assets so like the total number of assets blackrock manages is that's what gives it the super high valuation as a company on its own it's only worth like 60 billion and they just have an in like 20 trillion that's 10 times bigger than our economy do you know how much power and influence they have over the world if they're managing and have control over that much money um because it, it, it's not their money, but it's what investors give them and they choose where to invest it. So they yeah. have control of where that money goes. Do you know how crazy that is? Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's troubling. A, it's actually nuts how no one talks about this, you know? Mm. It's just so much money. Yeah, and like no one talk the, the the news never talk about it. Yet they clearly have enormous influence over companies in yeah. the United States of America, the world's most powerful co country. 
Mm. Yeah, it's insane. I don't know, man. I just feel none of these people are elected. I just well, feel... Yeah. That's, I just... The, that's the way is the argument with these things. Mm. That we don't see. We don't actually see a lot of the people that control many things because they're not actually... They don't exist in politics, but they just lobby politics or politicians. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like they've probably made a lot of decisions, but we wouldn't actually know because we've never seen or heard. Yeah, but it will be quote unquote public information, but it'll be in page like 4,000 of some article of some legal legislation that's been published on a website that nobody goes to. Mm, yeah. I think the thing is though, with like these, these lobbyists and stuff, Surely lobbying defeats the point of having democratically elected people, or doesn't it? Like, I don't understand why lobbyists are necessary. Well, I mean, I guess because you can, in America, it's more ingrained in the actual politics, because it's to do with, it's to do with how they pick the candidates. Yeah. Like what? the lobbyists are normally involved since the beginning, or they fund the, the fund lobbyists campaigns. fund the campaigns yes. of certain candidates. It's more complicated than that, but that's basically the gist of it, which basically means they owe them favors. In reality, that's what it means that they owe them favors. But I think there are um there's supposed to be laws about how much you can lobby and stuff, but mm -hmm. um, I'm I not sure if there is, I'm not sure what the actual limits are to it. Yeah, I was reading somewhere, it's about access. So if you donate a lot to the, the campaign, it gives you access to congressmen and congresswomen. And I read this quote, oh, it's a good quote. I can't remember who wrote it. And the guy, it was something along the lines of, if you believe the democratic society in America works well, try and have a meeting with a congressman uh, with no money, and then try and have a meeting with a congressman yeah, for hundred million dollars or something or ten million. I think I've seen that as well somewhere. Yeah, and then it's kind of like a, uh, I see, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, money. Money gets you further than campaigning, unfortunately. Mm. Well, it's, it's related. Even like in the United States, I can't remember for how many years, but the last so many elections, it's whoever spent the most in the, uh, the, ele uh, the election yeah. campaign won the vote, like won and became president. Yeah, that's true. You just well, need money, really. You don't, you don't necessarily need good ideas you just need to come across well yeah connections know the right people whatnot i think it's weird how when we're in school or college or university we don't really get taught that much the reality of the world you know and how money just kind of drives everything how money is just so powerful and like corruption is pretty prevalent even in uk politics it's just they they make the politicians in the uk make their money after they've been the politician they go work for one of these big banks or something that they made all this legislation to help and they do like some quote unquote advisory role and just get paid through the roof for it yeah and all or do speeches all kinds of things they get paid a lot for yeah with insane amounts of money like uh, the clintons with their goldman sachs and like Obama with his Golden Sack speeches, they get hundreds and hundreds, like five hundred, four hundred thousand dollars per speech. Yeah, it's in the corruption. Mm. Yeah, they do get, they do earn way too much, way more than they need to. Barack Obama to make one point two million dollars from three Wall Street speeches. 
Former president is reportedly set to be paid 1.2 for a, a, a series of uh, speeches to major Wall Street firms less than a year after he left the White House. Wow. Mm. Wow. How? Yeah, I mean, Theresa May gets paid a fortune as well. And David Cameron, they get paid hundreds of thousands. I mean, speeches. Obama's like, uh, Obama's a good speaker. He gives great speeches. But someone like Theresa May, she gives terrible speeches. So surely- <laughs> Well, the, I guess you're paying show. for the, the, the name. Or you are, you are, or are you paying them as a thank you for, you know, the legislation that they, or the rules they made? That oh yeah, that could be true. Growth. I think it's gotta be true, but who's, I don't know. It might be, it might be true, but that seems so fishy, doesn't it? $1.2 mm. million dollars for three speeches. Like what these big banks and stuff, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of- There's too much, these, these companies have too much money for their friends. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They ain't giving us any, eh? Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, I wish they would. I wish they would. But then again, I wish, I, I don't wish, I do not wish that the government had more power and collected loads and loads more tax over these companies because I don't think the government having all that money will be much better with it, to be honest. No, because they mismanage it and they, and they waste a lot of it or they don't... Yeah, they don't spend it correctly. Although some countries they have really high taxes, like in Scandinavia, and then they, I think in Norway, and but a lot of stuff, like our services and stuff, and is really good. So it does work in some circumstances. They have, they have tiny populations, though. That's true. They have tiny. Yeah, might not. Might not work. Natural here. resources, so it's kind of easy for them to. Well, it's easier for them to manage it. Did you see? The government wasted 8.7 billion pounds on PPE, which has been written off in the last year. Yeah, they wasted a lot of money during this pandemic or just all bought PPE that was they knew to be faulty, but they bought it because it was sold by their friend's company. Or... Uh, yeah, no, I've heard about that as well. It was um, Matt Hancock, wasn't it? his links to who he offered these big PPE contracts to. And they were basically just like his chums from his higher education days. Yeah. It's their companies, affiliated companies. You slimy person. Mm. And I think that, I think that assistant that he was caught with, her brother had some PPE company or some, something related to this that got a contract. So, oh really yeah i'll try and oh that's so dirty that's so dirty isn't it that's just like a family friend or that's what that is literally one of your mates done some favors for there but imagine a company messing up and buying nine billion pounds worth of stock which is perishable and then not you know uh, yeah it, it was um wouldn't happen i swear that wouldn't uh, happen his yeah, Matt Hancock's aide, Gina Colodangelo's brother, has top job at company with NHS contracts. Um, Which is a businesswoman, loyalist, and former non-executive judge. She's kind of hot. I mean, yeah, but he got caught. Uh, but the whole thing was fishy, that they happened to get that footage. Hmm. <laughs> Now she is kind of hot compared to him. Like, what, what is up with his hair? He just needs to go. He needs to shave his hair off. He's still hanging on in there with like half a crap, like half a little bit of hair at the back of his head. That is a terrible hairline, sir. Yeah, so her brother basically is an executive at a private healthcare company which has won a string of NHS contracts, according to Sky News. Wow. Wow, you reckon they know? There, there were lots of art. There was an like a British medical journal article on this that was saying how how much corruption there was. 
no, during no. last year. There was loads of articles about it saying, I can't remember the figures, but it was like X times more likely to be awarded the contract if you, like if they were, if they were basically friends with them or if they, they had some kind of connection with them. Even one of the top scientists, I can't remember his name, not, not um, Chris Whitty, it was one of the other ones. Even they were mentioned in one of the articles saying that, um, they were giving, they were favoured. Mm -hmm. Let me, I'm going to try and find the article. Mm -hmm. Transparency International UK, concern over corruption, red flags in 20% of the UK's PPE procurement. Damn. 24 PPE contracts worth 1.6 billion were awarded to those with known political connections to the Conservative parties. Three contracts worth 500 million went to politically connected companies for testing related services. Wow. Between February and November 2020, 98.9% .9 of COVID related contracts of the value of 17.8 billion were awarded without any form of competition, many without even adequate justification. Damn son yeah it's not it's not looking good no that's kind of wild isn't it like that is unbelievable 17 like uh, we don't even know how much money 17 billion is to be honest it's just no. insane amount of, like you can't quantify that in your head people can't but yeah man that's weird what are you doing you still trying to find it Okay, I've come. Let me. It's called conflicts of interest. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So really, I'm just getting it now. Yeah. Simple. That's kind of scary. What'd you find? I mean, I'm just finding the. Yeah. Nice. Nice. What time it's, is it? Twenty past. It's called conflicts of interest. Uh, I won't let <laughs> it won't let me view the full article yeah. anymore. Well, that didn't go too well, did it? Oh well. Maybe I another. Mean, that I just viewed some other, one. but basically, it's called conflicts of interest among the UK government's COVID nineteen advise advisors, and oh, it was wow. talking about Sage. Okay. And it was saying how, like, the way they, that, so the, the opening is saying that failure to declare conflicts of interest and especially financial conflicts is surely correct. But what has the configuration of expertise on the scientific advisory group for emergencies got to do with that argument? And he says that. Yeah, so he says there's certain people, certain people in that group um, mm. that are in charge of the scientific modeling um, were overrepresented in that group, uh, ones who had um, certain interests uh, were like people so, picked. So the selection, so the people yeah, that were selected kind of had you know leanings or connections so it wasn't completely objective yeah basically yeah. i feel like that's always going to be like that in life though whether it's nepotism in companies or just connections like everyone knows networking and connections in like the labor market for jobs is super important mm. it's who you know not what you know especially back back in the day way more so but even now a little bit yeah unfortunately it's true yeah well it's just the way it is should, all right should we finish okay I'm good. is that all right because i just got to cook some food and i got work next as well all right nice see you in a bit